Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. I saw the word limitation and I just shrugged it off. I kept praying and then I saw it the second time, limitation. And the third time I saw it, limitation. When God begins to emphasize something like that, he's telling you that someone is on his way to church already. And this is the embargo that the devil has placed over his life, over his destiny. Maybe someone has come here for the first time asking questions and saying, Lord, is this how my life will continue to be? I love you, but it looks like something is sitting upon my destiny. To limit means to stop people from seeing the fullness of a thing. To limit means to reduce the potential of that thing it may not mean to stop it there's a difference between limitation and stagnation stagnation means you are in one place limitation means you are not moving fast enough and if you don't move fast enough with respect to time there are some things that will not happen listen please I want you to pay attention this is the house of God and when God speaks like this it is because someone's destiny has been crawling and you need to experience the grace of God. Whether you are outside, whether you are inside, listen, when a word comes and it is for you, don't just assume. No, there, there is an attitude that you use to receive the word with. Limitations. I'm going to pray for you right now. We'll just take 10 minutes from my preaching time and let me just deal with these issues once and for all over our lives for as long as we are alive let me tell you and this anointing god has given us that which represents limitation in your life bar we must crush it to its knees i'm about to pray now and i want you to please bring those people under the anointing now that the power of god comes upon in the name of jesus every family every individual every destiny that has been tied down by altars of limitation so that you will not move forward maybe you are a mother maybe you are a father maybe you are a man of god maybe you are a businessman maybe you are coming here for the first time watching online and it looks like there are altars that have vowed that you will not move forward i stand by this mantle i have been anointed by god to declare your liberty right now may the power of god come upon you be delivered now be delivered now altars of limitation you come under arrest this moment altars of limitation you come under arrest this moment altars of limitation you come under arrest this moment in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me some of you are standing not only for yourself i want to pray for families here whole families that have been tied down it looks every altar sitting on the gapakosh katikata sitting on the glory of any family if i be sent by god i stand by this apostolic and prophetic mantle may fire fall upon that altar now May fire fall upon that altar. Release them now. Release their destinies now. Release their destinies now. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to declare. I declare my release. Every limitation, no matter how long, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the blood of the eternal covenant. Is someone praying? Those following online, I release that anointing upon you from America to Europe to Nigeria, parts of Africa. 
I declare, may the anointing of the Spirit touch you right in your room, in your office, right now. I set you free. Yokes of limitation be delivered now. Every chain that has tied your hand and tied your feet. Hold on, please. Listen, we are still praying. In Acts chapter 12, watch this now. When Peter was in the prison, they tied two parts of his body. Number one, his hands. That's a symbol of your productivity. Number two, your feet. That is the symbol of your advancement. They didn't tie his mouth. They didn't tie his eyes. But they tied his hand and his feet. And the Bible says they bound him. That means to bind a man. It is not every part of him you need to tie. If you can tie his productivity and tie the basis for his advancement, that man is bound. Let me release someone by the anointing of the spirit. I declare your hands spiritually. My God, fire is coming on people's hands now. These hands that have not been released. Maybe your father's hand was tied and all through his lifetime, he lived a miserable life. Maybe your mother's hand was tied. Some of you, the hands of your siblings, I come holding the key of David, given by the God of heaven himself. In the name of Jesus, may those chains be loose from your hands. Loose from your feet. Loose from your hands. Loose from your feet. Loose from your hands. Shapakatoskata. Loose from your feet. Man of God, I release you. It's time for your ministry to open up. I release you. Apostle, prophet, teacher, Makatosh Keteketa. Every altar sitting on your ministry. Every altar sitting on your ministry. Be released now. When Jesus was buried, it was not just enough that he was put in a tomb. The Bible said a stone was used to cover that place. So when Jesus resurrected, it was not just enough to come out to rise from the dead. That stone needed to be rolled away so he would come out. Same thing happened with Lazarus. Let me roll away any stone. When it was time for Lazarus to come back to life, let me speak to someone. Everything dead in your life, hear the word of the Lord. Talita Kumi, come alive, come alive, come alive. Every mantle, every door of favor, every opportunity that has been closed over your destiny. Everything that has died, hear the word of the Lord. Your influence, your relevance, come back to life now. Come back to life now. He said, son of man, can these bones live again? He said, only thou knowest. He said, prophesy. I want to prophesy. Oh, bones can come back to life. Dead businesses can come back to life. Dead spiritual dimensions. You used to have dreams, prophetic encounters. You used to pray for hours, but now something has happened to your life. May that fire come upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, hear me. When there is an attack in your life, there are three things that you will lose. Number one, the first thing that you will lose 
to tell you that the devil is attacking your life is your peace the second thing that you will lose when the devil is attacking your life is the gift of men if you lose money it was not an attack it can just be a business mistake but when you lose men I assure you it's an attack hallelujah look at this every point in the life of Jesus men and angels came to attend to him but when he was on his way to go to the cross men ran away from him only one man out of the multitudes of people he had helped to build and raise and do all of this one walked with him and held the cross for him aside from John and his mother at the cross so when you begin to lose your peace number two when you begin to lose the gift of man it is an attack from the pit of hell hallelujah the third thing that you will know as a sign that is an attack is passion passion for the things of God passion for your destiny passion for actualizing your goals nothing matters again your fight the Bible says the zeal of the Lord will perform this there is something called the zeal of the Lord when you lose your peace when you lose men when you lose passion know immediately that there is an attack I want to declare these three things over your life before we sit down number one the Bible says now the Lord of peace himself will give you peace always and by all means I want to prophesy that by all means dimension of peace that means whatever it takes for your peace in the name of Jesus may God make it so in your life that by all means order of peace enjoy it in the name of Jesus number two there are some of you who have jobs but you do not have men some of you have intellect you don't have men some of you have churches but you do not have men men are very important men are in many cases a sign that God is with you I have taught you that the proof of favor is not money the proof of favor is access to the hearts of men in the name of Jesus Christ I call to your life the ministry of men I call to your life the ministry of men enjoy the ministry of men enjoy divine connectors enjoy men of influence enjoy gifted men enjoy burden bearers in the name of Jesus Christ finally before you sit let me pray for your passion some of you your dreams have died because you are no longer serious about it everything you said you would do this year the zeal some of you even for ministry you may be men and women of God but sincerely that zeal again the zeal to fast gone zeal for God gone zeal for your goals gone the resilience to push towards your destiny is gone right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead I'm speaking as a prophetic word for someone let your zeal be restored let your zeal be restored your zeal for the house of God your zeal for the things of God your zeal for the pursuit of your destiny be restored in the name of Jesus please open your mouth in one minute and receive I declare that I receive in the name of Jesus for those in front I decree and declare the hand of God rests upon you that which you have been delivered from will never return to you again you walk in the liberty that is in Christ go and return with your testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ 
in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. you see if you're a man of God here please listen it is very good to be excellent and organized but it's also very important to be discerning because one moment God when God is sending people to come here he's attentive to the need of everyone even though they may seem like there are thousands of people and tens of thousands others following by way of internet let me tell you when God deals with men he deals with men corporately but he deals with men individually are we together now for the sake of one person God can wake a man of God and say make sure you suspend five minutes of your sermon until you address that person's pain this is the God that we serve. So um, whether you are in this auditorium or all of the overflows to the basement or outside or following by way of internet, please do not allow the devil deceive you that you are so far, you are beyond sight. That means you don't know who God is. The Bible says Jesus left one side of the sea. The disciples almost lost their life and went to Gadara to meet only one man deliver that man set him free and return back that's how far he can go for the sake of one person hallelujah so when God brings words like this among the many things that these words reveal is the depth of his love he lets you see and he lets you know that for your sake that when he's sending you to church you may be seated inside or seated outside and you may be wondering i don't think i count among the tens of the thousands of people around but that's not the way god works he can send a word and make it look like you are the only one in that church and address your issue and address your issue there are times you can be thinking and say god in my simple faith if you are the one talk to me about this and the man of God can stop his sermon and address that issue because God wants to go that far to give you confidence that he is dependable <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the Lord all right so be seated for one minute again we'll pray don't be tired of praying Ask the Lord again to reveal his counsel to you. Go ahead. Pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Are you praying? Don't be tired. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now I want you to listen. I'm going to give a prophetic word to someone. And when I give this prophetic word, it's not a song it's coming as spirit and life for someone is a continuation of something God began to talk to you about hallelujah this is a song that God gave me many years ago but I've not been allowed to sing it while I was praying in addition to this I heard that song again and I knew that it was a prophetic word I'm not a musician my own is to scatter the gates of hell and establish the purposes of God whether it's by singing whether it's by preaching all that is are we together yakare 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 yesu yache yakare listen yakare 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 yesu yache yakare A 
is a prophetic word. Help them, please. This is part of my teaching. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I've returned back. This is my assignment. Yakare means it is over. Yakare means it is finished. When Jesus hung upon the cross, he said it is finished. Take it high for me, please. In the name of Jesus, you came to church. It's, it's a song that God put in my spirit. It's not a special number. I'm speaking to your spirit, man. Yakare, 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 no matter the limitation It's over. Surely there is an end. Dear man of God, dear businessman. Yesu ya cheya kare Yesu ya cheya kare ya kare ya kare ya kare Yesu ya cheya kare Listen you see an apostolic and a prophetic ministry is a deeply spiritual ministry that operates very strongly by the gift of discernment let me tell you if this is all the service today and we suspend the teaching and do this it is still a successful service are we together now for some of you this night you go back home to sleep you will hear this song again it doesn't matter whether you can speak outside or not but this time around, you will not be the one singing it. You will hear it from the bowels of your spirit. Surely there is an end. Surely there is an end. Oh, someone hear me. It looks like ministry is not opening up. Surely there is an end. Everything that has a beginning has an end. Uh, Yesu ya cheya kare Yesu ya cheya That sickness will not kill you I assure you Cancer has an end HIV has an end Fibroid has an end Disappointment has an end Ya kare, ya kare, ya kare, yesu ya che, ya kare, ya kare, ya kare, ya kare, yesu ya che, ya kare, yesu ya che, ya kare. Yes, we are change in your life. Yes, we are change the negative seasons. Yes, we are change Hallelujah. Please play the strings for me. See, the Bible says, Do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess it says but be ye filled with the spirit and among the many signs that you are full of the spirit is that you will begin to speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs spiritual songs are not special numbers 
you must know how to align your spirit there are times that God will give you a song that song carries an anointing once the anointing comes on you the song fades you will not even remember it again that song was not a special number it was a ladder to usher you into a realm please don't be distracted God is doing something tonight for some of you God is responding to the prayer you prayed yesterday the prayer you prayed last week some of you you have been on fasting and prayers asking questions God said go to church he said when I came to the house of God then understood I we are going to sing this song one more time whether you can sing it or not you just listen it's not a special number it's a prophetic decree to the heavens oh it has come to end when God says it is over it means it is over when God says it is over it means it is over you will sing it over your finances you will sing it over your health condition listen he said I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise so shall I be saved from my enemies there are songs in the spirit called songs of deliverance are you ready ya kare ya kare ya kare yesu ye che ya kare ya kare ya kare ya kare yesu ye che ya kare ya kare ya kare ya kare yesu ye che It matters who is speaking. Yes, we are carry. Jesus is more than a prophet. Yes, we are The owner of the heavens and the earth. When he speaks, it is final. When he says you are lifted, you are lifted. When he says you are blessed, you are blessed. Yes, we are Cheya Kare. In your life, yes, we are Cheya Kare. Yes, we are Cheya Kare. Me Girma ya Cheya Kare. Sarki ya Cheya Kare. Ya Kare. Ya kare su ya che ya kare Ya kare ya kare For a barren woman this is your song Ya su ya che ya kare It's over Ya su ya che ya kare Over that unemployment Yes, we are Cheya Kare. Yes, we are Cheya Kare. Listen, God is called Alpha and He's called Omega. The Bible calls Him the beginning, it also calls Him the end. When you watch a movie, the movie begins with all kinds of motion pictures then they say starring they will list all the people when you get to the end of the movie 
you don't just know it because maybe the enemies are defeated you see it written the end that means stop watching it is over all through my church tonight please let this song be ringing in your spirit this is a song that God has given someone for the season carry it to your room war with it sing with it you are not a musician wake up in the night sing with it mention all the things that must be over because he spoke it the old season Yes, we are Cheya Kari. The old level of the anointing. Yes, we are Cheya Kari. Yes, we are Cheya Kari. The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Ah. This song is a revelation. I'm praying that it will enter your spirit. Yes, we are Cheya Kare. Serki a Cheya Kare. Megirma a Cheya Kare. Yes, we are Cheya Kare. Ya kare Ya kare Ya kare su ya che ya kare Ya kare Ya kare Ya kare su ya che ya kare Ya kare Ya kare Ya kare su ya che ya You will not always be barren. One day they are about to rejoice with you because the giver of children in the name of Jesus. Gideon, you will not always be hiding. A day will come you will be the captain of a mighty army. David, you will not always be in the wilderness. There is an anointing looking for you from a prophet. Saul, your donkey will not be missing forever. One day it will be found and with gallancy and honor it will return back home. Jesus, you will not only remain in the grave always. No, after three days you will come back again and then be seated on the throne with honor. Yes, we are Yes, we are Man of God, hear this. This is a word for you. You may cry, but hear the word of the Lord. Father, we are people who are sensitive to your operations. And you gave us the grace to move in this dimension tonight. Lord, we hear that which you are speaking and we declare by the Spirit of God and the Spirit of grace that over the lives of our global family, everything that does not represent the counsel of God, in the name of Jesus, the King has spoken, it comes to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please be seated. The king is also the judge of the earth. There are altars that are vowed not to let people go. In the judicial system, we have what we call the Supreme Court. And on matters of election and whatever, when you go to the Supreme Court, there is a panel of judges. And once they sit down and decide, I had the privilege 
to be in a nation just when they finished their election and the Supreme Court needed to decide on some matters and when they decided that the election the candidate who won it was so it remained so because the king had spoken it doesn't matter what any demonic altar is saying over your life if God has spoken and said your family must rise it must be so it doesn't matter what dream of death you are seeing that everybody around your life seems to die and you are afraid let me tell you if the king has spoken and said long life it is long life for you don't say but apostle someone else trusted God and it did not happen <clears throat> God deals with people personally yours is to listen to the voice of the king in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah let's see how far God will help us tonight wherever we stop we stop hallelujah are you ready for tonight Job 22 and verse 29 I'm speaking tonight on the reality of supernatural exemption the reality of supernatural exemption please listen very carefully this message for some of you in connecting to what we are discussing now can be a lifeline it can literally be the difference between life and death the reality of supernatural exemption grant us understanding oh God in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says when men are cast down koinonia thou shall say there is a lifting up it says and it shall save the humble person please look up exemption is part of the many secrets and mysteries in this kingdom that help the believers in Christ to walk practically in dominion are we together now among the many benefits that God has given us that the faith life provides is the possibility to activate supernatural exemption in your life in your home in your family how real is exemption Matthew chapter 6 and verse 13 Jesus himself was teaching the disciples to pray and he said lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us from evil do not lead us in the path that goes to temptation but deliver us from evil Psalm 125 and verse 3 Psalm 125 and verse 3 let's read it together it's a prophetic word for someone ready one to read for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity that means there are some prayers that you need to pray that some trouble should not come near you because if it does come it can lead to various compromises even though you may be a sincere person it says lest the righteous put forth their hands in iniquity the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous psalm 91 and verse 7 the reality of supernatural exemption let's read together ready one to read a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right side but it shall not come near thee say amen, amen. shout a loud amen again amen. one last scripture Job chapter 5 from verse 19 to 23 Job chapter 5 he shall deliver thee in six troubles yea in seven there shall no evil touch you believe it don't wait until when you cross your hands and you do not have the light that builds a defense for you satan will have access to come around your life jesus said satan come to me and does not find anything in me in famine he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword 21 
thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh 22 at destruction and famine thou shalt laugh neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth I like 23 it says for thou shalt be in covenant with the stones of the field and the beast of the field shall be at peace with thee write this down please exemption means to be free from an obligation or a liability that has been imposed on others exemption means to be free from an obligation or to be free from a liability imposed on others imposed on others by men by circumstances and by spiritual factors let me take it again exemption means to be free from an obligation or from a liability imposed on others either by men by circumstances or by spiritual factors when you are free from an obligation that others have to do or go through when you are free from a liability that has been imposed on others we say you have been exempted to be exempted means to be excluded especially from a negative outcome or a negative consequence hallelujah this is one of the systems of advantage that the saints can access in christ to help them maximize their lives and destinies and to shine forth as light genesis chapter 4 please verse 13 genesis 4 and verse 13 we are considering the reality of exemption is there such a biblical phenomenon as exemption this is cain and abel now realize that cain killed abel remember out of jealousy and envy he killed cain, um, abel and the lord appeared to cain and caused cain watch this now cain said unto the lord my punishment is greater than i can bear we are reading to 15. behold thou has driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from thy face shall i be hid it says and i shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me and the lord said unto him therefore whosoever slayeth cain vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold watch this and the lord set a mark upon cain lest any man finding him should kill him who set a mark cain made a plea and said listen i know that i'm already in trouble but lord what you have said is too much you have withdrawn something from me and anyone who sees me will kill me and the lord said okay this is what i will do i will place a mark upon you this mark was not a physical mark but that mark will compel anybody who sees you to mind their business and not have to go to kill you that means there are all kinds of marks on men listen carefully there was something on him that will make everyone who sees him to kill him imagine that you are carrying something and someone is minding his business but just sees you and doesn't know what draws the person to you to want to kill you then a mark was placed upon him that will make someone who would have killed you just turn say no 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 i will not touch you that mark must come upon you this night in the name of jesus christ please look up there are many people including believers not understanding this mystery has exposed them to all kinds of dangers there is no difference between an unbeliever and even their lives they profess a lot of spiritual things yet you see the tragedies that they fall into are we together now yes a man gets up in the morning and is on his way going somewhere and you don't see him after two hours you ask where are you and they say he's in the police station what happened i was reversing and something came upon me and i hit 
the convoy of a governor and they said come out and even sit on the ground first this guy was just out to go and buy panadol maybe in a pharmacy or whatever it's not normal my brothers and my sisters are we together just when they finish stealing somewhere they are putting a red tape there you come and enter the place and the camera snaps you you are free but they say the fact that you are in that photo you will still be there may the lord deliver you from evil in the name of jesus christ there are many people in prison cells today let me tell you sincerely if you probe them they will tell you i was innocent but there was something that they did not understand about exemption and they got into all kinds of troubles exemption how many people have bought properties that later found out it was a scam are we together as at the point they were doing it everything was nice everything was real but because there was no mark of exemption maybe there was a court case around it and the person who created that trouble just sold the land made interest and left you in trouble there are people for 30 years they are still having court cases and unnecessary issues because they do not understand this reality called supernatural exemption hallelujah jesus prayed a very serious prayer and he said lead us not into temptation he says deliver us from evil evil does not look like evil till it becomes evil are we together now so cain said my punishment is much and anybody who sees me will kill me and the bible says the lord placed a mark upon him in exodus chapter 8 please give it to us exodus chapter 8 from verse 22 to 23 who has a brother by the name samuel who has a brother by the name samuel you don't have to come out just stand i want to pray there is a samuel i'm seeing the spirit of death and the lord is saying to rebuke that spirit now in the name of jesus christ i pray for that gentleman whoever that samuel is i don't care what altar wants to kill i don't know whether he's sick in the hospital or maybe he's just minding his business by reason of this teaching i decree and i declare i use samuel as a prophetic contact to anybody if death is eyeing you to make sure you will not finish this year whether by sickness or by accident for you or for your children or for your siblings in the name of jesus we shut the mouth of the earth we shut the mouth of the grave in the mighty name of jesus christ please be seated exodus chapter 8 22 exodus 8 22 now watch this and i will sever in that day the land of goshen which in my which which in which my people dwell that no swarms of flies one of the ten plagues now shall be there to the end that thou mayest always know that i am the lord thy god in the midst of the earth next verse it says and i will put a division between my people and thy people tomorrow shall this sign be does the swarm of flies god separated his people in goshen and they were not part of that tragedy but it fell upon the nation of egypt when you go to verse 12 verse 12 please i mean chapter 12 exodus 12 the full text is from verse 1 to 14 but let's just go to verse 12 for sake of time exodus 12 from verse 12 for i will pass through the land of egypt this night and i will smite all the firstborn in the land of egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of egypt i will execute judgment i am the lord and behold it says the blood shall be unto you for a token upon the houses where ye are listen carefully and when i see the blood i will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when i smite the land of egypt 14. it says and this day shall be unto you for a memorial and ye shall keep it as a feast unto the lord throughout how many generations 
That means keep it as an ordinance. I have taught you these things. An ordinance is a written reality in the realm of the spirit. That means teach your children and your children's children that as they sojourn this earth, they are going to meet many, many incidences that will want to rob them of God's glorious destiny for their life. You must teach them this ordinance. That there is danger and there is evil within the land. But that what keeps people to last and finish their assignment among the many mysteries available is this reality of supernatural exemption. It says, you shall keep it as a feast throughout your generations and it shall be an ordinance forever. Hallelujah. So we know from scripture that supernatural exemption is real. Listen carefully. God is able to exempt his people from trouble, exempt his people from tragedy. How many people have missed a bus or a plane only for them to find out that the bus that they missed two hours later had an accident and everybody there died, no survivor. And you see their chest beating and they say, my God, so this is what my life would have been. Do you know, respectfully speaking, I know that many people have lost loved ones and this is not to stir up emotions, but there are many people who it was like the eye of a needle for them to still be alive today because they were just one point. They just sensed in their spirit, get up and leave this place. And they left not less than 10 minutes. Terrorists and bandits just came there and kidnapped everybody there. I'm showing you the reality of exemption. In my own life, I cannot begin to tell you the things that God has exempted me from. We pass when, when crisis was very serious in Nigeria and around the north. I remember one time I was to go from Zaria to Abuja to get a flight to Meduguri because most preachers were not agreeing to go and bless the people there and I said no no the believers there need to be strengthened I remember while we were going the Kaduna Express Road then I got a I think then it was Chanchangi or IRS one of these airlines they just sent a text that the flight had been shifted or cancelled or something like that and I just told the driver then I said can you go to Meduguri it was a Friday afternoon and he said he can go. I said, let's go. We turned, I passed Kano just about one hour when there was a bomb blast. There was a bomb blast. They declared curfew. That night, we slept in a place called Portiscum. For some of you who know the north, slept inside the car there. I just said to God that night, I said, Lord, for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. But I will not die. <laughs> Are we together now? I made up my mind. The military people had to stop us because there was serious fighting happening. And they said they shot the place by six on the dot. And we were plenty. You can imagine a pile of people, taxis, these trucks that carry cabbage and rice and what everybody was there up until morning. I know what it means to be exempted from evil. Hallelujah. One time I was traveling, I think I had a series of travels and shortly before a serious plane crash happened in Nigeria, not mentioned the name and, and the airline that time, I think I traveled to Wari or traveled to one of these places and in one of the trips I was in the air when I was sensing very terrible demonic presence within the airspace. You see, listen, there are times when spirits look for particular people, but there are times when spirits are not looking for particular people. There is a certain blood requirement. So it does not matter, maybe for instance, the altars demand that you bring 1,000 dead bodies. So they, don't, they are not particularly interested in anybody. Whoever becomes a victim, whether of spray bullet, whether of whatever, the point is there is a count in the realm of the spirit. So whoever falls within that badge, 
of 1,000 people. The, this spirit will steer individuals and you just find out that someone will just cause mayhem. It happens whether in America or in Europe. Don't think this is an African thing. This is from the realm of the spirit. A man will just look at his wife and kill his wife and kill his child and kill himself. Three over 1,000. 997 remaining he does not know that he was summoned in the realm of the spirit to add to a list one of these times i will have the time i have a series i if we are not able to do it this year listen put your seat belt there are series that i'm going to teach you one of it um, is this mystery of blood not the blood of jesus just blood and you will know why the bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood just because you want to win an election or you want to get a business whatever you go to an altar and he says listen you know what are you willing to bring 50 people 30 ladies 20 guys I said all right let it be done and you find people dying in a way that those who are causing the problem and those who die do not know that they are responding to a summon in the spirit I started sensing this for days. It was one time, I think we're going from where now, Lagos or wherever, to Kano. That was when I got to find out that the plane that went before us crashed. Hallelujah. Evil is real, but exemption is also real. Hallelujah. Evil is real, but exemption, the ability to navigate your way through the tides of wickedness until you stand and remain even to the end. This is an advantage that God has given the saints. Hallelujah. There's this thing that drivers or bandits or wicked people, they call it one chance. You know that that's where you enter a car, someone purports to be a driver, whereas it's a plan both him and the passengers have you seen that happen to someone they start going with you and while you are seated there quietly they will act as if they are all strangers then one person will turn and start misbehaving then you will find out that they were a team and they can even have a backup team somewhere let me tell you most people who get into trouble huh? if you probe them they will say something in me warned me something told me in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for someone's discernment. T tonight, you will encounter a heightened level of discernment. Yeah. Hallelujah. I think it was a, a great man of God, um, Dr. D.K. Olukoya, who gave a story I once heard. He spoke about a gentleman who was rushing to get a flight and travel somewhere. And the man missed the flight. He was so angry. Only for him to hear that the flight crashed and killed the people. Then he got an opportunity to enter a train. He entered the train and the train still crashed. You see that one, the devil was looking for him. As a person. And if you think the devil does not look for people, find out the story of the madman in Gadara. Instead of attacking 10 cities, I rather attack the one who is mandated to liberate them. Listen, in this end time, I will tell you, everybody can be a victim of Satan, but Satan is not looking for everybody. There are people called choice souls. There are people who have covenants, men of God, business people, and Satan has zoomed a system of attack, knowing that if I get one person, it is equivalent to getting 50,000 people. Even by business sense, it is more efficient to look for that one person. Hallelujah. Is that not the strategy that even terrorists and bandits do? They will kidnap a wealthy man's daughter and say, remember, this is your daughter. So how much are you going to bring? Person says, 10 million. Say, you are joking. Hear your daughter's cry first. By the time you hear the cry of that little girl, say, do you know what? How much now? Say, now you are talking. Bring maybe 100 million because they understand if they kidnap his pa it will say okay one million if he said five million said mr man just he's already born again so i know where he's going to go to
Hallelujah. I pray this prayer for myself because I know the evil and the wickedness. Listen, my life, I've experienced a little bit in this my small life. You, I told you, my account has been hacked. Hacked by people. Like they withdrew everything on a hot Sunday morning. Debit a lot, debit a lot, debit a lot, debit a lot, till 1,000 or something was left there. Yes, sir. So, there are some messages that if you don't understand now, don't just learn prosperity alone. Learn exemption. Because when you rise and you don't understand exemption, there are many, many things that you will pay the price for. Are we together? Say amen. amen. I know someone, true story, who was traveling and he decided to summon courage and drive himself and he parked his car along a forest in the night just to quickly ease himself because he was pressed. He came back and that car would not kick until armed robbers came. Do you think armed robbers just use guns? No. Armed robbers, bandits, all of these people, beyond the physical machinery, there are spiritual forces they have. They send these spirits before they come. But believers are dull of hearing and dull of understanding. You get up in the morning and walk into a trap with your eyes open. He said, has thou commanded thy morning? That means it's a risk to walk into a day you have not spoken to. Have you ordered things aright? Or you just walk into the day? Hallelujah. Let me give you three keys tonight. What are the keys that activate this supernatural exemption in my life and your life? Seeing that we need it as part of the tools for survival in this end time. You need it for your life as a man of God. You need it as a family man, as a career man, as a pastor. There are arrows that fly by day. There are noisome pestilences, I tell you. There are destructions that waste in noonday. And understanding your place and accessing this mystery. Mama, your children leave your house in the morning and they go across the nation. You do not know where they are going to. If they do not understand the mystery of exemption, may God forbid that someone returns back with a tragedy and they just call you to say, we don't know where your child is. The psalmist said, I lay me down and I slept. He said, I waked for the Lord sustained me. Because you see, when men sleep, many things happen. Listen to my teaching while men slept. When men sleep, many things happen in the night. For instance, when men sleep, Satan comes to sow all kinds of things. Exemption. Somebody sent me a text one day. Some years ago, I was traveling for administration. I woke up in the morning very early to prepare and rush to catch my flight. And he said, Apostle, don't leave. I got up in the morning. I saw yourself. I saw you inside a coffin. This was a ghastly motor accident. And you died. And it's not somebody who just talks nonsense. I'm not talking of people who just come and send nonsense. These are people with a proven track record. And I know that that is the devil's plan. For me to be surprised today that the devil wants to kill me is an insult to my spiritual growth. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's, it's, I mean, it's not a thing of, 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 of shock. If as evil as he is, he is still alive. Are we together? He may be dead that he's, if as evil as he is, he's still moving around as an illegal occupant. Has thou considered my servant Job? Said, I came around, but I could not do anything. There was a garrison that was around him. That would be your testimony. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. That Satan will come to your family and say, this is the family we targeted for this October. But as soon as they come, mysteries surround your family like chariots. There will be no penetration point. Satan himself was testifying. I came to Jobo, 
but I tried everything. There's a play that children used to play in Nigeria. They say, I pass here. Then they'll cover the place and say, no way. I pass here. No way. I pass through your finance. No way. Through your health. Through your prayer life. Hallelujah. I have seen people who as they progress in life, they become shadows of themselves. You know that they have not learned exemption. A man who was blessed or anointed, and by the time he's 40, 45, you see him and you're almost, what happened to you? Say life, life, life. This is why I'm teaching you this. What changed? What happened to your health? Me too, I don't know. Things started going wrong. What happened in your finances? My business just crashed. How about your job? I just lost the job. What happened to your children? One became an arm robber. The other one is in the prison in US. The other one just entered the prison last week in Europe. Okay? What of that one who got first class? Oh, a bike hit the person when he went to collect his certificate and he died. And you see the person moving up. Do you know why many people are not serious with God in old age? They will tell you, when I was young, I was at a Reinhard Bonke crusade. I was at a T.L. Osborne crusade. They will say, God failed me. God did not fail them. They just did not understand how the system of the kingdom operates. This is why God is teaching us this. So that you will not join the bandwagon of those discouraging people from being passionate about God. Many people today, I tell you, those who are some of the chiefest advocates, of an antichrist life were once in church they will tell you where was God when this was happening to me where was God when I was losing my job where was God when I was fasting and praying are we together now I know a lady who died two days before her wedding after waiting for many years two days before her wedding had bought wedding gown bought all these things and two days to the wedding she died I had the guy collapse too. Whether he died or not, I don't know. Don't tell me that's the will of God. The will of God is very clear from scripture. How about someone who builds a house and just at the point where they are preparing for the Thanksgiving, he starts coughing out blood. What is happening? They say something has been wrong in your system for the last five years. You have only six months to live. In the name of Jesus, I speak over someone. Whatever will make you labor for nothing, whatever will make it look like God is not real in your life, I exempt you from it right now. I exempt you from it right now. Please sit down. True story. They were looking for an armed robber around an airport. An armed robber and they had, you know how security people do, they, there was an intel all around and somebody was traveling sincerely and they just saw the person's photo looking, you know how they type it and there's a percentage, uh, you know those, there's a percentage of resemblance or so and that one seemed very high. That's how they stopped that guy there. He said, I'm a responsible gentleman, mm -mm. keep quiet. When you get to where we are taking, you can explain whether you're a pastor, whether you're a missionary, but for now, is that not wickedness? Are you the one who created your face? Somebody that looks like you stole, and now they caught you for it. You will not enter another man's pit in the name of Jesus Christ. Exemption. What are the keys that help people to operate this mystery in their lives? Seeing that the world that we live in is evil. Seeing that Satan seems to be ever determined, especially in this end time, to thwart and abort the program of God for individuals, families, nations, territories. What are the kingdom secrets that, that activate supernatural exemption let me run them down very quickly are you ready number one the first key the first end time strategy to survive and thrive in the midst of the evil that is in the time and the land is your passionate love for God your passionate love for God 
you want to be exempted from tragedy from evil the first biblical requirement is your passionate love for God not just your love for God Matthew chapter 22 please from verse 37 please give it to us Jesus said unto him thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul and with all thy mind reading to 39 this is the first and the great commandment second he says you shall love your neighbor even as you love yourself he said this is the in, in one of the synoptic accounts it said on this hangs the law and the prophets passionate love for god what is there in loving god first corinthians 2 and verse 9 what is the implication of falling in love with God but as it is written I have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared help me finish that scripture for them that not for them that attend koinonia not for them that are in ministry you can be ministry you can give money you can be a pastor and apostle that's not what god is asking you the realm of exemption is the realm of lovers genuine lovers of god the bible says there are things that god has in store for those who love him is someone learning how do i know that i love the lord psalms 42 and verse 1 I can tell you there are many people who do not understand the power and the value of cultivating passionate love for God as the heart or the deer panted after the water brooks he says so panted my soul after thee oh God I love you beyond anything and beyond anyone that is the realm where God says now that you have demonstrated that you love me let me honor and reward your love by activating a garrison around your life the realm of lovers is a realm where god himself will be committed to your exemption what are the proof that you love god the bible says in john chapter 14 and verse 21 he that keepeth my commands he said, he it is that loveth me. It's as simple as that. Not he that professes I love you. He that keepeth my commands, hath my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me. What is the second proof that you love God? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God that means passionate love listen carefully is translated into anything anything at all that makes for kingdom come is your obsession the house of God the program of God once it has to do with God it foils that fire within your heart can I tell you there are many of you here who are employers of labor there are people who love you and are passionately committed to the growth of that organization. Please look up. If there is a downsizing happening, is it true that there are people you will never downsize? The value and their contribution within that company, removing them from that company is like destroying the company. When they cry downsizing, downsizing, there are people who it does not bother them because they know that their love for that company, that corporation, that's how it is. There are many people who are too important in God's program to be wasted by any altar and any demonic force, any fraternity of darkness. No. They carry this mindset in the name of Jesus. I love the Lord with all my heart and I love his program. It does not matter what, the, what schemings of darkness. They know that the jealousy of God has been invested upon their life to defend them.
If that is you, say amen. amen. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ is formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ No I as sin say No I as sin No he has heard what God has prepared for me So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me Listen I have seen presidents travel. I have seen senior executives travel. Look at me, ladies and gentlemen. Because of their rank, because of the position that they occupy, and because of the advantage they provide for that nation or that organization, there are times that to see a president pass, you can almost be annoyed. They will stop you from moving. There will be a convoy of over 100 cars, yet the man is in only one of the cars. 50 will pass first with soldiers carrying all kinds of things to shock you, to flog you, to do all kinds of things. Even that you are away from the road, they can still flog you. <laughs> are we together? And suddenly you will see the man, sometimes he can even be as short as half of me, yet it does not matter. And he's in that car. There is a lesson there. That means there is a realm that you get to. The kind of supernatural protection. There are, I've taught you that there are angels that follow men. There are angels that follow offices. There are angels that follow mantles. There are angels that follow seasons. You see, not everybody has the same level of spiritual defense i submit to you potentially yes but pragmatically speaking our physical world has taught us this so when you are in love with jesus christ when you are in love with his house his program genuinely and sincerely that your heart is panting after him you can be sleeping in peace and yet there are many demonic spirits suffering because they thought of doing something to you <laughs> hallelujah yes. that is the kind of immunity diplomatic immunity that you have to enjoy the bible says they shall take up poison don't go and drink poison find out who he say will take up poison are we together? Passionate love for God. Let me submit to you sincerely. There are many believers who do not love the Lord. Now, I don't mean to insult you, but it's the truth. I have found out that many Christians do not love the Lord. They are around the things of God they are sympathetic to spiritual things. Are we together? They are affiliated to God, but they are not serious with God. To be serious with God does not mean to roll and cry. You can be rolling and crying and you are far from him. You are not even serious. Are we together? There are people who are deeply passionate about God. All that is in his heart is all that is in their heart. Lord, that which gives you joy, that which advances your kingdom, that which promotes your interest, this is what my life is about. I'm not talking of being a preacher, ladies and gentlemen. These are some of the things we have to learn from those who have gone ahead of us. Respectfully speaking, especially this, my generation of people, may God grant us the grace to not only fear God, but to love him. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Christianity that thrives just around convenience is a joke, not even in this end time. You will not know God that way. 
you must love him whether it is convenient or not the issue of convenient christianity respectfully speaking is what corrupted the christianity in many developed parts of the world it has to be convenient at my terms no sir when our fathers taught us god when those who went ahead of us taught us god they taught us to love him without conditions they taught us that when you if god says listen if god says to love me there are no conditions there are not but if <clears throat> whether it works well for me or it does not work well for me my love for jesus remains intact i, I want to be sincere with you so that you would know those who can secure exemption especially this end time do you know what god what it takes god to bring all of the arsenals of heaven to defend the interests of his purposes now it takes more than just reciting a five minutes prayer it might not satan uh, uh, plus jesus amen no 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 genuine love for some of you here the reason why you are not serious with god respectfully speaking is the kind of friends and association you have if you are not courageous enough to lovingly cut yourself from dangerous and destructive associations don't say it does not matter i am both old and new school i've told you this thing already depending on what you are discussing when you are talking about technological advancement and all of that i am new school but we're we are talking about foundational doctrines and truth i am very old school hallelujah this unnecessary evolution is destroying our generation is why we are not seeing the power of god passive careless christianity it does not matter after all i know that god somehow uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. you want to see the hand of god in your life you want to see exemption activated over your life you want to become a recipient of God's defense and jealousy. Love him and watch what he does. I hope you know that every believer is the bride of Christ. And the Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man. The devil wants to come and play games with your life. And God says, it's me you are touching. He comes to stand before you and say, pass through me first before you touch this lady. Show me a man lover of God I show you a man who has mastered the art of frustrating negative prophecies you will only talk rubbish for the rest of your life show me an organization that is founded upon love and passion for God I once met a billionaire in this nation and we had the opportunity to talk with him and I was just learning from him and saying what would you have to teach me sir and he said let me tell you this my love for God supersedes every other thing he said at his age he still does evangelism and he still does all of these things he said money is nonsense God took him from nowhere and put him where he is and that blessed me and changed my life oh may I never be too big to show you how much I love you may I never become too anointed to show you how much I love you may I never become too great too popular too influential this is what you must pray about Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.